Now, remember I told you it's these molecules at the end, these proteins that are the workhorses of biology. They're often the things that do the tasks in biology. It's very rarely the DNA that does things. The machines in biology are proteins. And so, to me, as a chemist, and many people working in this field, this is a, a frustration that perhaps through synthetic biology we could get past. Perhaps one day we could think about going directly to the workhorses and tinkering with them, retuning them, without having to go via genetics, perhaps trying to find a new way of developing synthetic biology. So instead of playing here with the DNA, we could think about perhaps playing here with the protein. And I want to give you one snippet of how we're doing that. So those of you with eagle eyes will see these blood vessels and these cells rushing through these blood vessels. And occasionally one of these cells will sort of tether and roll. So there's an example of a cell tethering and rolling. Now, this is a process that takes place in all of us. In fact, most mammals have this process. And it takes place when we receive a poison or a wound, something that might be caused by disease, for example. This leads to the secretion of communication molecules from that site of disease to the walls of these blood vessels, through the tissue to the walls of the blood vessels. And these walls are lined by these endothelial cells that detect those signals. Now, when they do that, they put out these little fingers, these are proteins, these are the workhorses. And these look out, these are sort of molecular hands, if you will, they look out for white blood cells. And a handshaking process takes place between these molecular hands and molecular hands found on the surface of these white blood cells. It's something that is at the heart of any disease process. If you've ever wondered how the white blood cells get to the site of disease and form perhaps sometimes of pockets of gruesome pus. This is the process, this handshaking process. So the key handshaking molecule is shown here. And we've tried to understand the biology of this handshaking molecule and to use that to design variants that will interact with us to allow us to map disease, almost any inflammation state. So in an undiseased state, we have a blood vessel with no molecular hands. When disease takes place, this molecule is pushed into the flow of the blood. It's looking for a corresponding hand found on the surface of white blood cells. So the fingers of this hand engage with this hand found lining the blood vessels. Our idea was to try and take this natural process in biology and to turn it on its head, to redesign it, to create a molecule that was also capable of shaking hands with the molecule in biology, but instead would do something different. In this case, teach that molecule to release a color. And I'll show you in a second how that works. So we have to build this synthetic protein. And we do that in a different way to the way that, that Jim approaches synthetic biology. We do it through chemistry. We do it from the bottom up. We take a protein that is capable of making color, and we equip it with the fingers that it needs to shake hands in a body. So we give it a stump of a finger, a stump of a finger. We give it the tips of the finger and another tip of the finger, so that a recognition process can take place that is like the process in natural biology, but now has a totally different function, a function here to release a dye. In fact, this is the dye that's used to dye genes. So what happens in normal disease is you see nothing. This is diseased tissue, but there's no color, there's no marker, there's no sign for us that disease is taking place. By designing a synthetic molecule that has a different process, in this case, that can shake hands, can selectively detect the site of disease, we can now stain disease tissue selectively. We can see hot spots of disease, diseases that take place in a whole range of different states. This process is a hallmark of many different diseases, cerebral malaria, multiple sclerosis, in brain metastases, in almost every key pathogenic state. We can take this coloring technology and to we can create it in a form that can be detected by non-invasive techniques, things like MRI. And I'm showing you here an image of a disease model that's being imaged using this type of technology. Handshaking, allowing us to map the site of disease. In this case, a disease model of multiple sclerosis. And what we're mapping here are the blood vessels that surround the lesion in multiple sclerosis at a stage of disease way earlier than could have previously been detected using these types of techniques. So uh, from a chemist point of view, we think the future is rosy. By trying to understand the bonds and how to construct those bonds in biology, 
We might be able to make probes or tools that could diagnose disease and we hope one day treat disease. So that opens up the intriguing possibility you could one day go to your doctor saying, I'm feeling a bit off colour, and it would be, oh, yeah, okay, that, you're blue, that's because of this, whatever. I have to apologise, by the way, as well, for we, we gave you food about 20 minutes ago, and then, then used the phrase pockets of gruesome pus, that can't have gone down well. Uh, and I also need to point out that when Ben says um, salicylic acid, probably the most famous molecule on the planet, I would go for water, H2O. I think... We mustn't let you get away with stuff like that, completely unchallenged. Now, before we, before we go any further here, and I, I, let the other two panelists get right to it, anybody just need a point of clarification at this point? Anybody who thinks, actually, there was a bit there, well, could you just unpack that a bit for me? Don't be shy. If you are all happy, then we'll just carry on. I'm going to take this kind of silence as consent, and that you're all absolutely riveted and can't wait to hear to our next two panellists.